Hello everybody and welcome to The Brog. This is episode 86 and I'm your host, Adam Josh. Now, for those of you who don't know, The Brog is a little rant type show that I started uh, about a year and a half ago after I had had another near-death experience. And uh, that would be the third or fourth near-death experience I've had in my life and I decided after I came out of that I thought to myself why aren't I expressing myself more? Why aren't I uh, putting the way I feel about things on record? I was laying there on my uh, what would have been my deathbed if uh, a few ingredients weren't off in the whole scheme of things that happened. And I was laying there and I was thinking uh, what was the purpose of my holding back? What was the purpose of my not doing the things that I wanted to do? What was the person of, uh, what was the point of uh, feeling uh, like I shouldn't tell people what I think or record or do the things I wanted to do? It didn't make sense to me. And I guess that sort of ties in with uh, my topic today. Uh, I'm going to call this one, You Are Awesome. And I don't say that lightly, and I don't say it in an arrogant way. I could have called it, could have called this, I am awesome, but I think more importantly, people need to realize that they are awesome. I mean, we're all awesome in our own way, I suppose. Uh, some people have maybe have just forgotten it. So, where to start? This is a big topic. The way my mind works is that I have a sort of overly analytical mind and a, and a mind that uh, tends to constantly be going, constantly racing, and uh, not in like weird ways like, oh, I wonder what she's doing, or I wonder what my favorite football team is doing, or I wonder if he said this thing, she said this thing. Those type of things, I, I sort of consider petty things, and I'd like to dedicate my thoughts uh, and my analytical mind to bigger subjects. I think that if you... Some people uh, don't have an analytical mind. Some people don't care to use uh, the power of their thinking and their mind and their, <laughs> their uh, capabilities for things that are profitable uh, instead to, like, watch soap operas or whatever, or think about gossip, but uh, I've tried to dedicate my mind to topics in my life that I think are worthy, uh, and topics that I think are appropriate, uh, topics that I think are life-changing topics. So I've studied, you know, religion for a long time, different religions, Islam, uh, I've read the Quran uh, three times. Uh, with the ha uh, hadith, I've read the hadith, which is like a, a collection of the the sayings of Prophet Muhammad. There is a lot of hadiths, so I I I can't say that I've read them all, but I mean there's encyclopedias worth of. This guy said that Muhammad said this. I've read that. I studied uh, Judaism for a while. Uh, I went to a Bible college. Got kicked out of a Bible college when I was 21, 22. Um, I worked for a ministry. <clears throat> I worked for a ministry for a while. Uh, I used to have to actually dress up every day, pretty much, and wear a nice suit and a nice tie. And, and uh, you know, it wasn't really my thing, but I can do it if I have to. So I did all these things in a in a in a search, in a quest, in a, I guess I was on a quest or a search. And in my search for truth. I came to conclusions, and I've come to conclusions, and I've learned things that uh, maybe some people just never got a chance to learn, or learn maybe on their deathbed, and, you know, add in the fact that I have had a few near-death experiences, and you have uh, quite the stories to tell, quite the amount of stories to tell, and things to talk about if you wanted to. and. When we talk about uh, different religions or different philosophies on life, I feel like, give me a second, let me go grab this gigantic folder of information that I have 
and uh, we'll compare notes. Being on a quest for truth, I've never, I've never uh, wanted to push my agenda on people. I've always sort of like said, well, I've been wrong a lot, so whatever the truth is, let's side with that. I mean, that that did take a while for me to get to, because I can remember being a heavy-handed Christian, uh, which is why one of the reasons I bought a megaphone. I don't know if you can see the megaphone, but I bought a megaphone so we could go, you know, preach at people. Went to New York City with it. I've taken that megaphone across this country and across the states. So but that that megaphone's actually been more places than a lot of people. <laughs> so why do I say any of that? Why do I tell you anything about like my religious studies or you know my hunger for truth? I say that because I think that um, I'm not out to I'm not out to lie to anybody. I'm not out to deceive you. You know, um, some people make enlightenment their business. Some people make uh, YouTube videos their business. Believe it or not. Uh, I'm not partnered with Google AdWords, I'm not partnered with uh, any sort of company that I'm making money from any of these videos. And being completely honest here, like 100% this is what's going on, what I did was I took a nap uh, from 6 p.m. until now, and it's midnight. And then I came to my studio, my little jam studio here, to record this. And I put on a suit because I thought, I've never worn a suit on the brog, I'm going to just Put on a put on a nice shirt, not a suit, but and I wanted to be honest and say that one of the reasons I did that was because my brain gets so cluttered with things during the day that I need to sleep. Another another reason is that uh, I feel like I'm a little bit more centered and focused now, so I probably just woke up about 20 minutes ago, and I feel like I can talk about this a little bit more. You know, you you and me. I haven't had the the days a new day's worth of stuff to to uh, weigh on my mind. Although I can't remember what happened on Thursday. I guess today it's officially Friday. So, I am not profiting from this in any way. I mean, there's like the whole spiritual profiting or like doing good deeds profiting, I suppose. But if we wanted to be sort of completely honest, I think even being more brutally honest, <laughs> it would be that uh, I don't want to be on my deathbed again and regret not having been honest and not having told you uh, people that potentially could watch this, like my friends and family and fans. Uh, that's a weird word for me. I'm not really into the whole fan thing, but um, I know that there are fans of my music. Maybe those fans would like to be friends. Um, we may never meet in person. I'll talk to you on Twitter. I'll talk to you in email. So I don't know if that's a fan. If you want to call yourself a fan, you can be. But um, whatever. So my point is, you know, I don't, I don't have any money in my pockets that I've made from these videos and, uh, and from the things I do as far as like AdamJosh.com. Um, but. Uh, I'm doing it anyway because I think it's important because I don't want to be on my deathbed again and regret not doing it and uh, because I like to think that somewhere in here I'm helping people but take it for what it's worth decide with the truth and you'll always be right <clears throat> with all that being said let me talk about some things here that may be disturbing and rock your boat and walk your, rock your world a little bit but I think are important nonetheless there's people like George Kavasilis who say like you are you have your own universe, you have your own galaxy, you are infinite, you exist beyond whatever you uh, have the idea of as a creator. Um, you have we're all existing inside your universe as, and we're a star in your universe and you're maybe a Earth in mine or another planet in mine. And uh, you take that information and then add that with John Lear who insists that uh, our soul is infinite. We're here on planet Earth to learn how to live with integrity, without envy, hate, or greed, and to express our love to our friends and family. And when we achieve that level of not uh, 
having envy hater, envy hater greed or learning how to live with integrity, then we get to leave this prison planet, prison planet he calls it by the Van Allen belts, the radiation belts around Earth that hold uh, us in. We get to leave it and go play with the big boys or do whatever we want to do as a soul or as an infinite being. And add all that, George Kavasilis, John Lear, they, we get to uh, David Icke from DivineCosmos.com. He has a whole series on accessing your higher self. He teaches about a lot of, a lot of the th similar things that David Icke covers as well and George Kavasilis talk, talks about that you are infinite. That this great trick that has been pulled over your eyes is that you're less than infinite and that you have somehow were born or constructed out of a god matrix and there is some sort of hierarchy of beings over you when in actuality there really isn't and all these things are done and designed to control you to hold you in a pattern of servitude to vampire off your energy, your power and ultimately your money in this realm that we're in and I've experienced all those things on every level in my past because of my religious studies I say all that because some of these guys that when they talk, when they talk, they don't come from my background, and I feel like like I I studied Christianity and I I worked for a Christian ministry and I studied Judaism and I I've gone to a mosque and I have a lot of Muslim friends and I feel like these people I have something that these people don't in that I have a religious background or a Christian background I've I've studied these you know three major world faiths and. I'm not coming from a place of I want I want to trash talk them, where sometimes you'll watch like New Age people or people who are talking about oh you you're infinite blah 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 you just you've forgotten and you talk you, you listen to them and they're like they're talking like in an insulting way to Christianity or an insult insulting way to Islam and I feel like so many people are caught in the paradigm and in the in the trappings of lifelong soul sucking servitude to religion. But that's not something to make fun of, it's not something to look down on. I feel like I was there myself, and if I could go back in time and tell my younger self anything, it would be, Adam, side with the truth. <laughs> Don't think that here I am in my corner and I have the truth and everybody else is wrong. The thing about re world religions, while we're on the topic, is that everybody thinks they're right. You know, David Koresh thought he was right, Joe Jones thought he was right, people killed themselves over a whole bunch of different uh, various cults because they thought they were right or that aliens were going to come get them or whatever. Christians think they're right, all the different sects of Judaism and all the different sects of Islam think they're right. I've recently met a few Muslims uh, from Ahmadiyya Islam, which is a little bit different than your traditional Sunni or Shiite Islam. I don't want to get into talking about Islam. Like I said, I have gigantic folders in my mind on every world religion that I've studied and I can talk from A to Z on any topic. The thing is, nobody wants to talk about it. That's my problem. I've learned all these things that I think were interesting to myself and I know a lot of Muslims, I know a lot of Christians, I know a lot of Jews, Jewish people, I know a lot of New Age people and when you start talking the way I talk to people, they don't want to talk anymore. They say, all right, Adam, you know what, that's enough. I had this conversation with somebody the other day about uh, one of their religions, and I was just bringing up some truth, truthful points that I think were truth that I've learned over my life, and that person said, you know what, that's good. We draw the line here, that's all we can handle, done. And if you get into a religious debate or a spiritual debate with somebody and they're at the point where they say, they say they're done, they're done. You're not going to be able to talk to that person anymore. They've, they've made some sort of firewall and you were, you were inside and now they've closed that and you're done. So, but at the same time, um, I feel like those certain comments or certain truthful nuggets, you know, can get past all that and be like a seed into their heart. So, if everybody would just side with the truth, it would take the ego out of everything. Because we would say, well you say that and you say that, but what's the truth? I mean, I wasn't there, so I mean, what, what can we figure out? I don't want to kill you over it, you don't kill me over it, 
Let's figure out the truth together. But clearly we don't live in that world, so. You are awesome. I see through all my religious studies and spirituality and meditation and all that, I see people the way they can't even see themselves. And I'm not I'm not trying to like start bawling here, but I might get a little emotional and I don't know if it's hyper empathy or what whatever uh, has happened to me this last few years, but I went and transitioned into this place where I feel like I wish you could see yourself the way that I see you. And I realized that I have become my own type of awesome through decisions that I've made in the past. I decided I am not Kurt Cobain, I am not Dave Grohl, I am not all these other musicians, I'm not Corey Taylor, although I do like Slipknot, I'm not like, I'm not a lot of, I'm not any, any of those people. And when I was on my deathbed, none of those people were there. It was a very shocking thing to me. I, like I said, had a few near-death near experiences. A very shocking thing to me who was there by my side and who wasn't. And in fact, there's somebody watching this who was there by my side. And <gasps> try not to get emotional here, okay? <laughs> but it's very eye-opening. And these people that you're giving your power away to, and your energy, and your time, and blah blah blah, like scroll through Twitter and look at people's status, like a like description of themselves. I love Justin Bieber, blah blah blah, Justin Bieber's my life. Uh, I read Johnny Depp is my world, like Johnny Depp, isn't he married? Justin Bieber, he's in a relationship, like who, what are you thinking giving all your power and time to him? Like. You're operating in a, in a plane of thought and reality that's consuming you that you can't, they don't, they're not up at night thinking about you. So why are you doing this to yourself? I got to a place a while ago that I said, you know what, whatever's done is done, but I'm not giving my power or my energy away anymore to my favorite musicians or my favorite actors or whatever. I'm done. And uh, they're not there to help me, so... I'm going to focus on my own life and my own awesomeness. I decided that you're awesome in your own way, I'm awesome in my own way, I'm not you, you're not me, I'm my own being. And that's a thought, a seed of a thought, that has sprouted into this fully grown freaking weird tree that barely nobody else that I know seems to have in them. And I look at people and I see sparks in their eyeballs and I think they might be getting this, they might be seeing what I'm saying. They might know what I'm talking about, but uh, the truth is I don't have many people that I can talk to on these types of levels. So, where are we going? I think that you're awesome, is what I was getting at. You are awesome in your own way. You're awesome in the sense that you're awesome like a star is awesome in its own way. A planet is awesome in its own way. Uh, Mars isn't Earth, Earth isn't Mars, you may be Mars, I may be Earth, I may be the Sun, you may be this. And if you're infinite, then in your own universe maybe you're something else and I'm existing in your, you know, universe as something else. <clears throat> but you are unique and you are awesome in your own way. And I would recommend to you to meditate on your own feelings, on your own, on your own awesomeness and don't allow to yourself to be influenced uh, for giving your power away to anybody. So anyway, what I was saying was that I started with this thought of I'm not going to give my power away to musicians and then it ultimately started growing its way into religions. And I started thinking to myself, you know, I've given a lot of power and a lot of dedication and a lot of my thoughts away to gods. I wrote a song called uh, Our God Slipped Away. And uh, I play it for you, but you know what? You can you can listen to it if you want to on the Mr. Adam Josh YouTube channel. And uh, that was sort of a song that expressed a thought that I've been having for a while, which is that who are these gods? Where are these gods? People give their whole lives up in Islam and other soul-crushing, all-consuming religions to give their power to gods, 
that where are these gods? Oh, we have to have faith. Okay, but who are these gods? Okay, they're a being. Let's say, for example, that uh, a being, a being is here, standing here, and that being is a god. Okay, now we're talking a god that you know it could have a singular point of here I am. This god, okay, you're giving all your power away to this god, right? And he's, what is he doing with that power? What is he doing with everything? Oh, yes, worship me. I need that. I'm so ridiculously insecure that I need you to get down on your knees and worship me. I'm like, what? Okay, even if that's the case that you're into, like, the whole submissive thing and, like, oh, yeah, take my power. I'm nothing without you. You're great. Like, I don't know what type of father wants to hear that from his kids. Oh, Dad, whatever you say, just don't hurt me. Please don't spank me. Oh, you love me? You love me? You love me, but I'm afraid of you, but you love me? Weird psychopathic things that go on between religions and the people that follow them. I'm not trying to knock people in religions because I've been there. I'm just saying that whoever this being is, hey... Hey, he's not you. This being is not you. You're not that being. So hey, what does that mean? <laughs> you are unique and sovereign unto yourself. If you've solely given your power away, if you have solely given your entire identity away t to a god, oh, my life is just supposed to be one big pointing sign to baby Jesus. Hey, guess what? Good for baby Jesus. But what about you? If you lose all your identity, you don't exist. If, if some, somewhere along the line, everything is God. Everything's God, man. Everything's God. Where are you? Where are you in that? Are you God? Are you saying, oh, I'm God then? No. You're unique unto yourself. And if you do not have your individual sovereign identity, you do not exist. Okay, so let's agree to disagree if you don't see what I'm saying. Maybe you think, you know what, Adam, you think you're so smart because you've studied religion maybe a little bit longer than I have, or you're sort of weird, so uh, maybe you think that you've come somewhere, but you know what, my God is everything. My God is my world, I give all my power away to my God, and my God rules me. Okay, well, good for you. Everybody needs, you know, an, an older brother or a father, but ultimately, a loving father, an older brother who is interested in your for your progression and your maturity would want you to stand up on your own two feet and realize that you're your own person. Whether you give all your power away to this guy or that guy or not. While we're on the topic of this guy, say that this guy is the creator of everything. Okay, good for him. He created everything. Congratulations! We're all still here. I'm not trying to be rude or, ins or, or uh, insensitive about that, but like, okay. You created everything. Good for you. If you want to believe that, that there's one individual being responsible for everything, then you're sort of like the same as all those cult leaders I talked about earlier. They're like, oh, we're all right, you know, drink the Kool-Aid and kill yourself. Okay, there's one God responsible for all of what? Here's some questions you may have never asked yourself. That I have because of this weird analytical mind. Okay, you're God. You're God. We're going to talk about your God. Get ready for this, because I'm going to probably rock your world a, world a little bit. Did you know that any ideas that you have about God, any ideas, Adam, Josh, or you, or anybody has anybody, any ideas about your God, guess where those ideas are? You're in your mind. Anything that you have, anything that I could explain to you about this drum symbol is in my mind. Hey, surprise! So this symbol is an idol in my mind, and I'm describing to you what that is. Not the actual thing, but I'm describing what it is. Whatever ideas I have about God are in my head. Whatever ideas you have about God are in your head. So hey, guess what? If you're describing God and I'm describing God, we're not describing the same being. Whatever you say about me, I am independent of that description. You can sit here and describe I can describe this symbol until the cows come home, but I am not this symbol. Symbol. I can describe this guitar until the cows come home. I can pick it up and I can be like, look at this guitar, oh my god, it's blue, it's an ESP, LTD, I paid $260 for it, plus tax, blah blah blah, I can even play it. Oh, I can play this guitar, can I play this guitar? Maybe even to play it good or bad or whatever. 
hit the cymbal while they're playing. My point is, I'm not that guitar, even if I could play it. Picking up a baseball bat and a baseball doesn't make you the Yankee Stadium, it doesn't make you the Air Canada Center. It, playing baseball doesn't make you famous. All these sorts of things that you may have never thought about. That, hey, whatever ideas that you have about God <laughs> are your ideas about God. They're not God, the being himself. See, like, I have all these ideas about God, and I think I'm right. So that means that all those ideas about, I, that I have about God are God. No, 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 no. All those ideas that I have about this symbol aren't that symbol. They're their ideas in my mind about the symbol. The symbol is the symbol. The thing is the thing. The being is the being. Your ideas about that being are completely different. So you could grow up and somebody tell you, hey, God wants you to kill yourself and come to the spaceship with me, just drink my Kool-Aid. And you can grow up in that type of environment where you're like, okay, God wants me to kill myself. And it doesn't really make sense, but hey, sure, whatever. And drink the Kool-Aid. And then guess what? You drink the Kool-Aid and God was like, I don't know what the hell they were on. I don't know what the hell they were thinking. I never told this guy that aliens are coming to kill himself. So let's back it up a bit. You can see my point. Who is this God that you're giving all your power to? Who is this being? Where is this being? More importantly, what does this being... Okay, so this being created you. Did this being create Earth? Did he create all the other planets? Did he create atoms and subatomic particles? Did he create the universe? Did he create other universes? Is, is your God, this, the, your singular God, the one God for other planets as well? And people on other planets and being on, on other planets. You know, there's life on other planets. I don't know if you know that or not, but there's air, there's oxygen, that's life. There's probably beings on other planets that we've got off-world. Human beings are on the International Space Station. They've apparently landed on the moon. There's beings everywhere in the universe, and, and there's life everywhere in the universe. So is your, is your particular deity the same deity for all these other people? And is the same deity from the Torah, from the Christian version, or uh, a the Bible, is it from Islam, is it uh, uh, Gaya Matriya from Hinduism or Vishnu? I mean, which God are we talking about here? Because if it's just one being, then, uh, then it's just this one thing. Now, if you're saying that it's all these other things, and this God's saying they're like, that's not me, then who's right and who's wrong? So again, maybe we'll have to agree to disagree. But uh, when I look at the idea of ag a singular God, um, I have the first thing that I have to admit to myself is that there's lots of gods and whether or not you want to believe that there's lots of gods or not doesn't really affect the fact that there are seven billion people on the earth and they all have their own ideas about God. Therefore, they've all ha created idols in their mind because the uh, thoughts that they have about whatever their god is, isn't the actual being. So you can ask seven different, seven billion different people, and they'll all probably give you different ideas about god. Uh, most of them will probably tell you what they've read in a book. And uh, they haven't, uh, you know, weren't there when these stories were written. They don't know what sort of circumstances these people who are writing these stories are, 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 were under. Uh, but they'll tell you, this is the story that I read, this is, this is what I believe, and this is my god. When this God being that they're talking about, like I said before, is independent of all these things that you say about him or her. I'm independent of all the bad reviews or all the good reviews or anything that anybody's ever said about me. Uh, my sister, Angelie, wrote my bio on my website and I'm very thankful for that. But I read that and I'm like, oh, she's describing me pretty accurately, but I, I'm still independent of that. I'm not that description. I'm a lot more than what she talked about and there's a lot of things that she didn't mention. So I, I'm not that. I'm not the description of that. I've moved on from a lot of those things that she said about me. I, I'm not saying that in any sort of negative way if she's watching this. I'm just saying. You're, I'm not your description of you and you're not the, I'm my description of you either. I can like pretend like I'm reading your mind and get into your soul and I'm a Scorpio so I can look in your eyeballs and sort of figure you out. I, in my mind, I'm figuring you out, right? But I, you're still you whether I figured you out or not. You know, if you've given all your identity away and all your individual power and beingness to a god, where do you exist in that paradigm? 